can't always handle the truth. Artists can't always handle the truth. And, and the reality is there's a bigger ship being steered all the time than any one decision. So someone can say something very negative about you. Is it important for you to know all of those individual negative things that people are saying? No. There's a bigger picture. There's a captain of the ship. And you don't need to know where there's little problems throughout the entire ship. That artist needs to stay positive and, and upwardly, you know, positive and creative and imaginative and charged up. And part of a manager's job is to buffer the hard stuff that's going on around them and keep reminding them to keep the eye on the prize and to keep reminding them of their beauty, keep reminding them of yeah. their creativity. You know, I, I, I quite often... Um, uh, rem used to say to myself when I was managing people who were quite high stress and high maintenance that that you know there would be a disaster com looming around every corner. Of course. And as the manager, I used to think it's like the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding up on everything that you're doing. But if you just wait long enough and you're calm and you look towards what you really need to accomplish, if you let the horses get close enough, you find out that it's Curly, Larry, Mo, and their cousin Bob and they're just the stooges and it really isn't a disaster. Exactly. And quite often my entire job came down to just making sure that we got through the next five minutes or the next day yep. or the next week yep. without burning all of our bridges. And, and so if I was looking for a good manager, one thing I want to know for sure is that he knows what the word no means. He knows how to work around the word no. Yep. He knows how to not set up an expectation that there will be no's. He doesn't put people in a position where they cannot deal with the no and that, that it's going to be a problem for them. So yeah. you don't tell your artist five minutes before they go on stage in front of 10,000 people that they just got dropped from MTV. That's a no they don't need to deal with Absolutely. right that moment. And it's also right. when the disasters are happening, like the bus is broken down or somebody can't get through immigration or the show didn't isn't going to happen or whatever's going to go on, that the manager has the calm and the wherewithal to find solutions. Absolutely. So that's the personality sort of side but we talked about the contacts and those kinds of things in order to maximize an artist's career yeah. and you know so if I'm a baby band and you also touched on your manager's advice on your actual artistry so let's talk about that first your manager's advice on your actual artistry now what the hell did this guy learn or this girl in three or four years of law school that gives him or her the right to tell me what I should do as a songwriter well, nothing particularly that happens in law school or business school tells you that. But again, you're su you should be picking a manager whose advice, who's a music person. You have to have some kind of a passion and an ear for music. And you have to have some kind of a vision about what the artist should be presenting, what the best of their sound could be. Not necessarily what it is, but how what it could be. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing in law school, there's nothing in any of these business schools that oh, makes... Sorry. Yeah, and I said law school, you were right, it's not. I mean, it could be your buddy from down the way, right? Absolutely, but they, they have to... Part of a manager's job is to comment on the creative and to have an idea about the creative. It's business role primarily, but... Uh, that manager has to have a creative vision of who you can be, who the best person you can be creatively, and have some kind of a musical background, some kind of a music passion, and some kind of an ear. Right. So the guy may not be able to tell you to change the verse into a chorus or this, but he certainly should be able to tell you this is not a hit, or we shouldn't put the song up there first that says the devil is taking over the world right. and you should burn all your clothing. Perhaps we want to start with something a little softer on the demo. That kind so. of thing. He should have some vision of those things. And one way you could easily figure that out is look at who else they manage yeah. and see what the, that manager's taste is and try to figure out what kind of role that manager played in the development of the music of that other artist. If you don't want a manager who meddles, quote unquote, in your music, then you know, you shouldn't work with somebody who is a former producer or a former record company exactly. executive. Yep. You should work with somebody who's strictly nuts and bolts uh, business yep. sort of side. And there are people that don't want a manager to have any input on their music. I'm sure Smashing Pumpkins boy had a real hard time with anybody telling him, you know, yep. how he should or should not do things. Yep. And you got to find somebody who's copacetic with what your vision is. But yep. usually your manager will have some input. And in my experience, I had a lot of input. And I actually got to certain points with some of my artists where they got their back up and didn't want any of my input on their music. And I actually think it, 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 I became the guy who couldn't tell them the truth. 
and it was bad for our relationship and it was bad for their record making and it did not make me feel comfortable for the way I wanted to work in the future. Right. So, you know, really you want to be on the same page with your manager with regards to their critical input that they can actually be the person who gives you that first glimpse of the truth, at least the truth as far as what the record company is going to say about the music or what the radio station is going to say about the music or the marketing people so that you go, listen, okay, I believe that that's the song you want to go with, but I'm telling you as your manager, I will deliver this to the record company. I will sell it wholeheartedly. But I'm telling you, they're going to hate it. Yep. And that you can trust him to, so that you then say, okay, how do we fix this? And you exactly. look for solutions together. So that's on the musical sort of side. Then, then we get into the manager as, as, um, as the guy who is going to get a deal for you. Now, if I'm an independent band... When do I want a manager who is, quote unquote, going to make it rain or get a deal for me? Well, you always want a manager that can add, to, uh, add developmental steps and move you up the ladder. You always want to be with a manager that has the ability to do that either because they've got great experience and have done it before, ideally, or because they're just Johnny Hustle and they've got so much tenacity and so much understanding of the terrain that they're on and so much passion that they can literally open doors that you can't get opened. So at every single point, if you ask yourself, do I think this manager can move us up a notch? And the answer is no, you're with the wrong right, manager, right? right. At whatever. And that doesn't mean you have to have the, all the experience in the world. but And it doesn't mean you have to fire the guy. No. You may say, we need another partner. Exactly. We need someone that can make the rain. Maybe you have. Maybe that's when you go on a hunt for a, 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 le a law firm or a lawyer that's much more right. activist, right. can bring deals to the table, because what you're comfortable with this manager is the fact that you can trust them, and they always will tell you the truth and be honest, and they'll work 24 hours a day for you. But he may have a different role on your team. Exactly. He may be a junior manager in consultation with a senior guy. Exactly. He may have a lawyer who's overseeing what's going on. You know, it's the same thing on, on where you're, when your money starts flowing in, and we can talk about that later on, that the manager m probably is not an investment counselor either. True. So, you know, and, and a lot of bands come to me and they say, I need a manager, I need a manager. And I say, well, you have lousy songs, you have lousy stage performance, you have no fans, you know, uh, you, you just happen to have 1,100 people on the internet who've signed up probably because you were naked half the time and they were just looking for, you know, some shots of your <laughs> beer gut. And, and the fact is that you just don't have enough going on. Managers are percentage guys. Yep. So if it's a percentage of nothing, that ain't nothing, and that's the way it is. Yeah. So you're not going to find the right manager probably until you've got your act together to a certain extent. Absolutely. You have to do something that's killer before you can get a killer manager. Like I, I keep going back to this. Don't expect anyone to do for you what you're already in some way not really doing well for yourself, which is make great music and hustle your ass off all the time. Right. If you do those two things... The rest of the team will come. Now, what about this tremendous fear that people have about getting involved with a local manager, you know, or a, or or a, local a regional manager. manager? Like we talk about that because we're in Canada, folks. You know, like they talk about, oh, I don't want to get involved with the Canadian manager because I'm going to need a big wig from New York or a big wig from Los Angeles or this or that or whatever. You know, and they don't want to get involved in that sort of thing. Or, you know, like I gotta, I've got to hold on to all the pieces of the pie. This also happens with regards to copyright and with regards to other things. I've got to hold on to all the pieces of the pie because I've got to save them for when the firm, I don't think they exist anymore. Now they've got some other name. But, you know, one of these big Los Angeles-based management companies is going to come and they're going to make everything happen for me what about that attitude because I mean, sometimes it, it can't always be wrong no I mean again we've talked a lot about this you know don't get your cousin and your brother and the guy next door to you that it's not enough to just say they love us so that should be our manager uh, by the same token, they could train alongside your manager and ultimately become part of the team they could be an important part of the team because or a they lot could be of a major it is pain in the ass to the manager uh, they could be. They can play a role. They could play a role if it's just your cousin. But don't give. Don't sign a long-term management deal with your cousin until you see if your cousin can make some rain. But if you've got if this idea that you've got your eyes on L.A. and New York before you've conquered Toronto, before if you can't get anyone excited in your own neighborhood, I don't know how you think you're going to get someone excited in L.A. or New York. So having a manager that has again proven track record of going taking artists from this level to this level. Whether they're local or international, the chances are you're finding someone that gets you and your market and your local and regional business life at home is better than waiting for someone in L.A. to come. Oh, I agree. I agree. And also the guy in L.A., you know, if he's making his money off of Limp Biscuit, 
Is there any money to be made off of Limp Bizkit? <laughs> but, you know, if he's in that kind of business, the odds of them actually paying real attention to him exactly. are not we particularly good. And, and actually, the guy uh, who looks after Black Eyed Peas and John Legend was a junior, junior guy at that firm because nobody wanted to work with those artists because they were so junior on the, right. on the, on right. the flagpole there. Or totem pole, whatever. Um, and and like we say, there are exceptions to every rule. We talk about doing things regionally and locally. You know, there is Feist from Toronto who couldn't get arrested in Toronto, who went to France and things happened. So there are exceptions to every rule. Hell, these guys from Arcade Fire had to go from Texas to Montreal yep. to be able to build a career and talk about getting it bass backwards. But, you know, there are things that happen in, in a million different ways. So, you're, you know, you want the right manager at the right time and, and you want to be able to trust him with virtually... You want him to be your conscience, your guide, your surrogate, your buffer, um, and have the knowledge to work and assemble the members of your team to keep things moving. And keep things performance-based. We've talked about that over and over and over. So you're from up north. You're not in the big city in Toronto yet. You can't get to Toronto. You can't get to New York yet. But you've got someone in your local town that will kill for you and will be there, who's reliable, who will put the posters up, who has some concept of getting you in places where that you can't, mm -hmm. get, wh wh that you can't get without a manager. They've got some hustle. Maybe work with that person, but beware of signing a long-term deal with that person unless it's based on performance. Right. If you say to this person get us a major record deal get us build us this amount of fans get us uh, uh, this spot on a major festival if you achieve these things then it's incentive based it's performance mm -hmm. based and and that way you're not tied to a long-term deal with someone just because they would love you a lot but really can't move you to the next right. level and there are managers <coughs> that are old school and that are new school for example if you were trying to build something Indian you needed a guy to run around and put posters up on the street I'm the wrong guy yeah you know, yeah. I'm a guy who works pretty much from an old school perspective. I'm used to working with big record companies. I'm also used to working with big entertainment companies. It doesn't have to be a record company. Yeah. But I'm not going to run around and make sure the flyers get up for your show where we're giving away free beer and, and, your, and your girlfriend's going to sleep with the first five customers in order to get them to come to the show. You know, because it's just like, that's not what I do. So you probably want a bunch of kids who are really aggressive, who have a lot of experience in breaking things off of the street. So there's a different manager for each situation. And there's guys who multitask and do multi-different things. But really, you want to find somebody who has the experience and the love of the genre that you're in and of you specifically as an artist. Artist.